The David Olson Show, coming to you from Meriden, Connecticut. Here's your host and mine, Todd David Olson. Hi folks, welcome to my show. In today's episode, we'll be featuring a local artist named Morielle Babker, affectionately known as Jemmy's. She'll be sharing some of her artwork with us. I hope you enjoy the show. I am a visual artist. I am channeling high vibrational frequencies into my paintings for the benefit of the owner. To exist at a higher frequency equals to exist in a better everyday reality. As you can see, my paintings can be oriented in any direction the owner desires. These are the original design creations that I reflect as organic minimalism. Each painting is coded by channeling from the higher realms with beneficial high frequencies. Happiness, light, joy, peace, bliss, love, abundance. Mix several designs together for a wall scheme that is uniquely yours. Be playful. Hi, Jemmy of Jemmy's Art Place. Welcome to my show. Hi, Todd. Thank you for having me here today. Where do you find your inspiration as an artist? Uh, I, I receive images. I've received images for decades, um, like internally. That's one place. That's the major place. Um, just everywhere that I go, like I see things. I, I take photographs of certain color combinations or pattern combinations that kind of germinates into something else. So right now I'm exploring minimalism. Um, and so patterns, shapes, positive space, negative space um, is, is what is going on in these paintings. So uh, you have a tendency to paint in patterns and you can see your work progress. So. Uh, do you find yourself limited by certain patterns? Because patterns can be limiting. They say, especially in martial arts, if you want to be creative, you should not get stuck on patterns. Do you get stuck on a certain pattern? Do you, do you find difficulty moving on from a certain pattern and trying to find different patterns? Or do you, do you find it I don't try. I don't try to find anything. But and I you, never have. So. Um, do you find yourself limited by the patterns? Or do you find, do you, do you no. see, do you, they actually, do you now have no trouble getting inspiration? They like build on each other, uh -huh. even as they're coming out in, into the canvas. Mm. Um, there's like more, it's almost like a kaleidoscope kind of thing mm. going on. So I choose, like I'll, or I will feel something more strongly than others and that's the thing I will focus on first. Mm. And then um, go on to the next thing. So, like, say, some days I'm suddenly working on six canvases. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, do you try to? Um, it, it comes from within. From, from I know inspiration comes from the soul, like 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 a musician or something. So, uh, do you uh, do you interpret what your what your painting or do you just paint something just to paint it just copy it well or do you have something an how I started a few years ago is um, with the I, I had people in my family encouraging me uh -huh. again to get back into art uh -huh. so um, the, these are some of the first paintings right here uh -huh. so I was just allowing whatever wants to be to be. Mm -hmm. um, so part of this whole thing that I love about and why I call it organic minimalism is because everything now um, is becoming so digital, mm -hmm. digital art creations and um, and I'm, I'm allowing color and paint to express itself mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and through these channelings that I receive. 
-hmm. So these, for example, were um, initial shapes mm -hmm. and the one that's near you right there. These are similar in the, this design. This has a design right, so like that. and this right here. These, so you just change these the are like the first it. three that I ever did. Mm -hmm. and, and so first time I've ever allowed myself to use pure hues, mm -hmm. just go, just let them be. Mm -hmm. um, and then... So you do all this by hand? By a few yourself. months later, I'm seeing something. I, I, I can't remember how this came up. I think it came up when I was listening to certain podcasts. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, that's a shape that was on one of my paintings. And these are runes. These are actual ancient runes. Uh -huh. wow. But I didn't know that. Uh -huh. I was just like, whatever was coming, in, like that I could see visually, uh -huh. one after. I don't even know if this means something. This might be saying something. So like, it's very, it's very fun for me because so at that stage, I'm, I'm channeling archetypal images, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, can you briefly explain what you said you went out of art for a while, you had, you had an injury, and you stopped, and then it's your, your, something like you said your daughter or your sister or something got you back into it? Right. So um, I was doing a few things, um, children's book illustrations back in the, when I was raising the children, and then I had a, a, a bad car accident in 1999. And so it just changed my whole life. It turned my whole life upside down. It took 14 years to be back in the game. So you had to go to therapy and rehab or something? So I have like a traumatic brain injury and I had a lot of physical um, injuries. So like I had to teach myself how to read again. I used wow. to be an avid reader and um, this was like a, a journey. So my little sister is like a saint, um, a living saint. Uh, and um, and she, she knew how to get around like the, like the walls or the limitations we create for ourselves. And I just felt like I don't know how to do perspective anymore. I can't do any of this anymore. And, um, so that's called like a block, you know. You've 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 just staunched the creative flow. Sorry, not me. You'll have to choose someone else, you know. And um, she just asked me, "Could you just paint the church for me, please? Could you just please?" And she just very gently was. So you were gonna quit. You were gonna give up doing that. So that she was like I, I did that for her, and then, then um, I was working again and. Um, things were progressing very nicely uh, for me and I was beginning to feel, I don't know, competent again. And um, so then she was saying, uh, this is a few years later, so then she's saying, how about if, like, I forget which night we chose, after work you come over, I'll make dinner and then we can set up um, your canvases and you can do some painting. And like she said something like, and I, I want to learn some of it or something like this. So that just got she me. She encouraged you. Yeah. So I was like, sure, okay. Because I love to share art. You know, yeah. I love this whole concept. And uh, yeah, so she, so I was actually painting landscapes and, and that's where my Jemmy's Place logo came, um, is the cottage painting. Um, and then... Um, COVID hit and everything and that's when my daughter kind of had stepped in and was saying you know mom while you're stuck at home and everything maybe you should just doodle a little do some paintings or whatever and then this this whole kind of concept just rushed in to me and um, I, I don't know this whole complete concept of like the people of today uh, and the young people of today especially they're on the go they're on the move and um, you know I know that there's value to visual art um, so it emanates a certain energy it emanates it into the space and um, it's very beneficial for humans and so um, 
I came up with this concept of tiles, like playful, so it could be inexpensive, it can be accessible to all. Um, people can hang these up with a tack if they want to, and you can just play with designs, configurations, combinations, and I just thought I love this so much. I love this concept. So that's what, um, like I'm saying, I began to just listen inside, listen and the first things that came were these. Wow. The second thing was I was breaking down a, a landscape into simple, in, sim, into simple stages. So those are very similar. And so Looks like they go together. there's a lot of detail. Like this is together. like a wheat field, you know, and then this is showing, well, some shape and some mostly color. And then this is the abstract version of, you know, just what's the basic here? What's the basic building block? Um, of what we see in, in nature. So that's the that's next, how this all started. And then the, next then question, the flow was on. The next question I want to ask you <laughs> is, uh, you said about computers. I know computers came in and around, uh, I guess, like maybe the 80s or the 90s. And I started on a Commodore 64. And I know that computers changed a lot of industries around, like the recording industry and the internet changed a lot. Of the t There's no more TV. People stream TV now. So do you find, a, can you see it, maybe predict the time where uh, you won't be doing the painting anymore? Like now they don't have film, they have SD cards. So can you see a time where you won't be painting with paint and brushes anymore? You'll be doing it on the computer? Or is that, I know that time has probably already come, but do you see a time where that will completely replace paintings? Like the SD cards replace Not film? Not as long as people like me are around. <laughs> We're very tactile. We're very earth elemental people. You think they'll saw paint? In like the I tornadoes? represent the earth, earth energy. So, do I think people don't make me comment about people? No, it's more <laughs> about the technology than the people. Do you uh, see technology changing? It already is. Like I was saying, like but you, well, get rid of. Uh, you've you heard say, of like NFTs is some new kind of. Of, of art art investment. Basically the question is, do you think this, this form of painting will still be around 20 years from now? Or do you think computers yes. will take it over completely? I think people need, the, they, they need to feel this, that they need to feel these, these experiences that are, they're very tactile and they're very high frequency. Um, so you actually put the, f the high frequency vibrations into the paintings, so the they, I don't put them in, Todd. They just they come channel, through. They channel through. They you. just come through. Yeah. So. So this helps you meditate. You say so you don't need like alcohol. A lot of these are really relax. zen. Um, so, the next series was the orbs and these lines. So the next things that came out were like energetic orbs. Nice. And. Um, in that one right there. I see that one. Where it's like, can you see how, if you're near it, you can see how it's radiating energy, the yellow energy. Then these, um, and they can be, the other fun part is they can be, which I love, they can be oriented in any direction, even like this. Like they're just. So they're similar, but you just sort of change the colors around. Whatever comes to me, like I said, um, I believe this one was the first one. Um, and then I did several. Can you see how that one has like a red? On I see red. So it's vibrating differently than this one. Can you see that? It's vibrating differently. So it's, this one's more solid. This one's more like jagged. Mm -hmm. So there's just, yeah, it's, it's a lot of, in fact, that's a new line that um, I'm coming up with is med meditation tiles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I already asked you what is, the perp what is the purpose or goal of your work. I think I asked you that, didn't I? I think I did ask you that. But uh, the next question is, this one says, uh, what motivates you to create? But it says, I was born this way. Does that mean you were a prodigy? So you had natural talent, and then you went to school for it? So you actually have a degree, you have a master's degree? Yes. Yes. So I started when I was eight. 
But you were like a prodigy then, right? They call it a prodigy, like a child prodigy. I was like um, privately trained for years and um, art shows and um, and then college and then I was diverted from majoring in art that time. Um, I just go with the flow of life, so I did that and I um, I went with the flow at that point. I was in college, I'm saying, but then I was married before I was graduated from college and so then other things took precedence and priority and then one of the greatest creative achievements of my life was having children and so I was very focused on that for a number of years and um, over a decade and then like I said I had just started getting back in toward my art again and I had gone back to college to finish up and so I was majoring in art history and fine arts and um, then the car accident happened so so did you finish school before <laughs> the car accident or after the car accident? Before the car accident. So you were okay until you finished school and you were going to go professional probably, right? You were going to get out to go, to go professional. Right. So my, my, Your career didn't really start. my art history advisor wanted me to go to Sotheby's in New York City and train as an apprentice. Um, get an internship maybe. For... Um, investment, um, what is that word? Award. Appraisal. Appraisal. Yeah. So, right. I'm glad you thought of that because I don't think I ever really did. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, that's all of the questions that I have. So uh, thank you for being on the show. And, You're very uh, welcome. Thank you for this opportunity to talk about my work. Thank you for watching the show. I'll see you next time.